Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I want to present you with the choice of a lifetime. The Tutorial Linux horde has grown to about 50,000 uh, subscribers, and to celebrate that, I want to let you guys choose the next uh, deep, like in-depth Tutorial Linux course that I do. This will be anything under the uh, system administration umbrella, so it includes things like um, scripting, automation, um, infrastructure design, security. I'll go into the topics in a second. I want to let you guys vote on the topics you, or the topic that you want me to cover. Um, this course will be paid. It'll be a lot like the uh, hands-on Linux sysadmin course that I have on Udemy. My goal is to, I don't think I'll be using the Udemy platform for this one, but my goal is to, instead of like that first course, which is very broad and not very deep, it's good for showing you how everything kind of hangs together and the lots of different disciplines that you need to be a solid sysadmin. In this course, what I want to do is treat a single topic deeply and teach you literally from the fundamentals all the way to everyday like working sysadmin knowledge uh, and the ability to troubleshoot like uh, common issues and actually build stuff with it. So there's a survey link below in the description. Uh, click through there and just, it's a, literally a one question survey. Just choose the topic that you want to see me cover next. Um, I've got a bunch of choices in there, which I'll go over in a second, but you can also write in your own if none of those appeal to you. I will manually go through all of the freeform text uh, submissions if you check other and then write in a topic, and I will tally those as best I can. So try to keep it short and really descriptive, no like long paragraphs, because I need to be able to quickly kind of tally up uh, write in topics. So that said, I'm going to just cover the topics quickly. Uh, as I do this, feel free to click through the link and uh, choose the one you want or write one in. So the first is something that's really growing in popularity, uh, certainly in hype, is Docker and containerization in general. And I thought what I would do, uh, I work with Docker every day. I send about 100 million emails a day with Docker uh, and do all kinds of other interesting things with it. I would go into, I think, the areas where that's appropriate, the areas where that is not appropriate, uh, even though it's hyped up to be appropriate. I think I'll cover a lot of the problems with Docker that rarely get talked about, um, certainly at like the beginner level. And then we'll just do a ton of practical uh, stuff. So you learn the theory of how containerization actually works, how it's different from virtualization, all that stuff. And you'll learn the practical day-to-day -day container usage uh, definitely with Docker, perhaps with uh, other competing like containerization things like uh, FreeBSD jails, maybe Solaris zones, um, Rocket, stuff like that. So that would be the Docker and containerization course. If you're interested, vote for that. The second one would be the Go programming language. It's fantastic. After Python, it would be my second choice for system administrators. It's a strange accent. The, the, the accent on that syllable was a little bit strange. Um, it's a great uh, language, the kind of general purpose. You can use it for scripting, but it's perfect for network services, dealing with APIs. Um, it's a really easy to learn, uh, very kind of great blend of performance and how expressive it is. So learning Go, definitely a hot skill. Um, I could do a programming course on that with an eye towards like system administration. Third, uh, the cloud. Everybody ready? Uh, Amazon Web Services. Companies love to spend money on AWS, and for all of its shortcomings, and there are many, AWS is uh, basically an industry standard for like running VMs on other people's hardware. So there are a million AWS services that have sprung up around that from uh, simple compute things, which are just VPSs, right? Virtual private services. Uh, virtual private servers, VMs, uh, to kind of like more specialized services like S3 is interesting, um, DNS, like Route 53, uh, CloudFront for caching, um, security groups and all that, like network ACL stuff, VPCs. There's a million services that are obvious that I'm missing right now, but you know, obviously RDS, um, Elastic Cache, all of those like basic services that you need to know if you're gonna go do some AWS work for a company. Um, I would cover those and I would do it in a way where we would build up a very practical real life infrastructure for like a toy, uh, maybe even a real life open source product. That would actually be cool. Um, so basically showing you how to work with AWS by setting up a real life project. Um, 
the market's great for that right now. I mean, you can make a killing doing uh, cloud AWS work. Um, yeah, AWS DevOps engineer, look for that uh, out on the market. It's like, it starts at 120, so. Another idea is infrastructure as code, specifically using Terraform for uh, provisioning and possibly a couple other tools that I've got ideas for. Uh, HashiCorp's Terraform is an amazing tool. Um, I love it. You can do a lot of interesting things with it. I think it has the right sort of approach to the problem of uh, provisioning and like state management. It is still in beta, but I think it's uh, becoming widespread enough, at least in large uh, markets like big cities in the US, um, that it's a very useful skill to know. Infrastructure as code in general is just the principle of having your infrastructure be built from source code files, plain text files of some kind. Um, Terraform is one way to do that. There's many others, uh, like AWS's cloud formation, uh, for example. You can even do provisioning with like Puppet and Chef, if you'd like. But the idea is that it's not Snowflake servers that you set up by manually clicking a GUI or interacting with an API. It is reflected in source files. You can take those, take them to a new AWS account or whatever account, and you know basically run that infrastructure source code and have new infrastructure up and running in half an hour or so. Uh, the idea behind that is that you can figure out what's going on with your infrastructure by just reading the code that defines it. It's very nice. That is how things should be done in this future we live in, and uh, I'd make a course on it. Another idea I've got is modern high availability infrastructure design. Things get pretty interesting when you have to do things at scale. And although many people won't ever need to um, you know, scale something like Facebook, uh, it can still be really useful to know how to, to know the principles behind scaling and behind like clever, high, highly available infrastructure design. How do you prevent things from uh, dying as soon as like one server goes down? How do you make sure that um, you've got more than you need of every service provisioned? How do you make sure that um, you can automatically respond to failure and kind of work around it? Um, that kind of gets into its own thing, and it's a really useful skill to have. Um, when you're growing your sysadmin skills from just like dealing with getting good at dealing with one server to getting good at dealing with a hundred servers and then there's this level of like being able to design infrastructure so that no matter how many uh, servers or services you're responsible for you can design that infrastructure intelligently um, so that you can sleep through the night instead of getting paged because you have an outage um, so i would make a course on that I could also do a basic uh, networking course. It's something I haven't done on the YouTube channel. I'd rather save this for YouTube because I think it's something that should be, it's basic and it should be freely available. It's very time consuming, which is I, I haven't done it yet, but feel free to vote for that if you want to speed it up uh, in the form of a paid course. I could also do a sysadmin career course where I actually go through um, each, uh, the things that I think are most important for growing, getting into growing and then like excelling in your career so like on the business side not technical if you guys want that i can do that i've done a few free videos on like uh salary negotiation and a few other like of these career based things um i think that's it's a topic that can yield just as much return as investment in technical training so i definitely want to give you guys the option to see more of it i could do a course on uh sql and other types of data stores so like no sql would be a part of this um I would probably want to focus on Postgres because I think it's the best SQL option for a huge amount of use cases. Um, it's the right choice in so many cases, and it's actually the right choice even in some like NoSQL situations where some people would go with Mongo or another uh, key value store. Um, I would definitely also, so maybe what I would do is like Postgres and then Redis for the NoSQL uh, store just because of its uh, interesting data types and what you can do with that. Um, I think Postgres and Redis will give you a huge amount of actual practical skills uh, without having to learn other tools. So I think those are probably good ones to cover. If you're interested in that, so we'll be covering like obviously basic SQL, like how to actually write SQL statements. Um, and then also from an operational perspective, setting up SQL servers, setting up highly or high availability replication, um, talking about scaling, uh, like re scaling for reads, uh, scaling for writes, if you need to do that. Um, and just general operational stuff, how to design failover, how to do all that stuff.
Two more. We're almost done. Modern CI and CD. I really don't want to call this DevOps, but I know people are going to write in DevOps, so this would be like a DevOps course. Taking an application and then writing the automation around um, kind of like a pipeline for delivering that quickly to production in an automated way. Um, this doesn't cover the whole DevOps tool set because the DevOps is about people and it's not particularly a skill that you can, uh, it's not just a bunch of tools to learn or like a CI CD pipeline. But so I'd be focusing on the technical aspects of building a CI CD pipeline for some software. So taking some source code that gets checked into a version control system like uh, Git, and then running automated tests against it, regression, promoting that to a staging or QA environment or a performance environment or performance testing environment, um, and then kind of building the pipeline that then brings that to performance through these different stages and then finally to production. Um, and then probably also a little bit of monitoring. This is kind of a huge topic, so maybe this is not the greatest idea for a course, but it's on there for those of you who really, really want it. Um, I'll think about it and I'll, I'll come up with some kind of re realistic plan uh, that can fit inside of one course. Finally, I wanted to offer this topic. Um, FreeBSD slash ZFS, I think I just put uh, ZFS on the, um, on the survey, but ZFS, the Zetabyte file system, is uh, I think the best file system currently out there right now. It is battle tested. Uh, it was bequeathed unto us by uh, Solaris. It is a copy on write file system. It is prevents and actually repairs bit rot. It allows for instant snapshots and rollbacks. Um, it is incredibly clever. Um, it does all kinds of clever caching things. Um, it allows you to do to have lots of different file systems that are mounted in different places and have like per file system um, ACLs, um, which greatly increase security, especially for things like containerization. Um, it can prevent bit rot people. Like everyone should be using ZFS probably on your like NFS um, system at home for the use for storing your pictures and your music and stuff. Nobody likes bit rotted pictures. Um, it's incredible. It's really useful for real business situations. And I think it's not used enough at enough real life companies because people just don't know that it's out there. ButterFS, in my opinion, is a weak, at this point still, weak substitute for ZFS. I have run ButterFS, and and with that would go, I guess, this is not an option on the survey, but you can write it in. I could do a FreeBSD course. Uh, I love FreeBSD. It's amazing. For many cases, it is the server OS I would choose today. Uh, I do choose it for my own projects a lot of the time. It's not always the right choice, but often it can be the right choice if you need the exquisite features that it offers. It offers, you know, really mature containerization thing with jails. It's got all kinds of fun security stuff. It's got an incredible networking stack. It's got uh, a really nice packages and ports uh, source system so you can install binary packages or compile them yourself. God, it's got so many delicious features and interesting like research being done and first available on FreeBSD. It's just a really solid thing, and I think it will expand your mind if you've just been in Linux world your whole life. It's like there's this other thing, and it's totally worth checking out. So uh, I would be happy to do a course on FreeBSD as well, or ZFS. So there are your choices. For those of you know three of you that are still listening by the end that haven't chosen yet, uh, please check out that survey. Comment below if you want to convince other people that there is a better choice to write in on that survey. And... Uh, yeah, I'm excited to see. Uh, I think voting, I'm going to close it in about a week. I'm pretty excited for this, so let's make an awesome course. That's just horribly cheesy. Anyway, I'm really excited for this. I can't wait to see what you guys choose, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty awesome. See you guys in the next one. Peace.